All right, so this is your chapter 12 test review. Um, this you could definitely use to study um, while you're working on your quiz corrections uh, to prepare for your test. And uh, the first thing that we're going to work on is solving for um, an interior angle measure of a triangle. On your test, it will say find the value of x. All right. Find the value of x. So here we go. All right. So we have these angle measurements. Um, and to find the value of x, we need to do what with all three of these um, angle measurements? When we <coughs> make an equation. Yeah, make an equation. So on the triangles, I'm going to be looking for an equation. If you don't have an equation, you're going to lose points. Okay? So we have x plus x plus 38 plus 98 equals what? 180. <laughs> 180. Now, you have two options for writing your equation, okay? Option one, show the full breakdown. Option two, go ahead and combine your like terms. I don't care which one it is, but you have to show an equation. Now you need to solve that equation. What would you do first? Uh, yeah, subtract 136. And then what would you do? Divide by, two. Divide by 2. And you have 22. That's all I ask you for, okay? However, on your quiz, I also asked you, and I could on your test as well, what are each angle, what is each angle measurement in the triangle? So I know one of them's 22, right? Because that's X. Okay, I know one of them's 98. What's the other one? 60. Okay, and that's the three. It's better to have more, like if you put both answers, but I was only looking for 22, like that's fine. Okay, we good so far? Now, on your quiz, there was some confusion on the next problem with the triangle. Um, hold on, don't write this one down. Um, let me actually come back to this. Because that one, let's do, let's do, sorry, I know I'm getting kind of messed up on this. Um, I, I need to redo number two. Okay, so let's go ahead and here's your scenario for number three. And we'll come back to number two. You have two angle measures of a triangle. And those angle, angle measures are 78 and 56. What is the third measurement in the triangle? All right, this is for sure one problem. Okay, this is one question on your test. All right, find the third angle measurement. So really the only difference here, and the reason I wanted to do this one after number one, is because you're finding another interior angle measurement, but there's no picture. There's no image. All it says is these are the two angle measurements. What is the third angle measurement? Um, so again, just like we just said in number one, I want you to set up what? Equation. Equation 78 plus 56 plus x equals 180. Now, that's option one. You could write it like expanded, or you could go ahead and do what's 56 plus 78. 134 plus x equals 180. And now how would you solve for x? Yes, from both sides. Okay. Very good. So we're done with interior angles. Now let's go back to number two and do an exterior angle. Okay, so for our exterior angle, here's our measurements. Okay, so the mistake that I saw a lot of people making on the quiz was they treated this like an interior angle, thinking it's supposed to add up to 180. That's not my rule for an exterior angle measurement. This is a question on your test. Uh, it looks like one. One question on your test for exterior. Does anybody remember how I set this up or what my rule is, Jason? 80 plus x minus 5 equals 2x. Yes, that the exterior angle is equal to the two interior angles not connected to it. So he said it the other way. Either way is perfectly fine. 2x, whatever the exterior angle is, will be equal to the sum of the two interior angles not touching it. All right, so now, K, 
Can I combine anything on the right side, Isaiah? Um, 80 and 5. Yeah, what's negative 5 plus 80? 75. 2x equals x plus 75. Can anybody raise your hand and tell me what in the world am I going to do about <coughs> having an x on both sides of the equation? I need to get them on the same side of the equation. How do I do it, Morgan? Yes, I have to move it. And guys, we don't want a negative x. Plus, it wouldn't make any sense to move 2x to the right side. I'm trying to get x by itself. Subtract x from both sides. x equals 75. This is not your answer. All right, so Miles thinks i got to come back here. Do you agree? Yes. What's 2 times 75? 150. 150. Okay. Now, that's all you have to do on your test. Even though there's another unknown in here that you could solve for, you don't have to. You could, but you don't have to. All right? So, we're starting off with all these um, angle measurements of triangles. How are we doing so far? Okay, doing okay? All right. Um, before I go any further, I want to talk about the first section of your test. We talked about it at the beginning of class, but it's not on the YouTube video, so I just want to make sure we get that in there. Um, so I'm actually I'm going to shift off the screen here for a second. Do you guys uh, remember at the beginning of class us talking about um, the parallel lines? Like, like, let's say they go this way. Okay. Uh, what do we call... A line that intersects two parallel lines like that one just did. We call it a transversal. And when that happens, it creates like this domino effect of, of um, angles. So one, two, three. I've got an 80 degree angle. I've got five, six, um, seven, and eight. Okay. So the first five questions on your test, guys. All right. So first five questions deal with this. And then we get into triangles, which we just solved. All right? I'm going to say something like, describe the relationship between angles 2 and 7. Angles 2 and 7. Well, there are five angle relationships. Let's say them again. Supplementary, vertical, corresponding, alternate interior, and alternate exterior. So what do you think, um, Isaiah? Alternate exterior. Give me one pair of alternate interior. Um, Gabe? Um, angle three, angle six. three and six. And here's why. Because they're inside the parallel lines and they're going on opposite sides of the transversal. Okay? So really, guys, the challenge is you just have to know how these um, angles work. What is a pair of corresponding angles? Just give me one. Raise your hand, Zach. One and five, do you both, do you, does everybody agree that both of these angles are in the top left section of the intersecting points? Yes. 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 So one and five is definitely one. Give me one pair of supplementary angles. Um, Kennedy. Eight, six, and eight. six and eight, because they're next to each other, sharing a common point. Give me one pair of vertical angles. Uh, Kyle. Seven and six. Seven and six, okay. So, based on all of that, I know that angle 1 is what measurement? Angle 1 is what? Is 80 because it is what to the given? Vertical. Vertical. Angle 2 is what? 100 because why? It's supplementary to 1, okay? Angle 3 is 100 because? It's vertical to 2. It's supplementary to 1. And guess what, guys? When I come down to the bottom intersecting all those points, they are all corresponding. So guess what they're going to be? It's going to be exactly the same. 80. I'm sorry. Hold on. 100. No, hold on. 80. Yes, it's 80. Yeah, I know. I just second guess myself for a second. 80, and then this one's 80, and then this one's 100, and then this one's 100. All right, the first five questions on your test. Uh, deal with your angle relationships. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I reviewed that. All right, so sorry about that. Okay, so we've got through that. We've got through triangles. Um, we are now into, um, we're about a third of the way through the test.
Okay, so let me just kind of get back to where we were. Okay, so we did numbers two and three. Now we're gonna find the interior angle measures of these two polygons. Now, on the first one, I know how many sides there are because it's just called a 28 gon, okay? Obviously, that's not something we have memorized, so what would we use? Our formula. Our formula. Now, on a hexagon, it's a different story. You have to know how many sides are in a hexagon. If you don't know that, you it is impossible for you to get the right answer. All right, go ahead and find the sum of each of these polygon interior angle measurements, the sum. Go ahead and find it. All right, guys, so again, we're using our formula, S equals N minus 2 times 180. Um, so how many sides? 28 minus 2 times 180. You will not be deducted if you don't show me that. Um, there's only one way to get to your answer, 4680, okay? So um, just write the answer, 4680. What about a hexagon? 720. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 times 180 is 720. Again, I don't mind if you don't show work because that's actually one you could have memorized. Hexagon is 720. Okay. Yeah, very good. Hex, just like 6. Very good. Um, What about these? Okay, I tried. All right, we're just... I know, sorry. Yeah, I didn't. Okay, this is easy if you know what you're looking for. Are these triangles similar? You have to be able to explain it. Okay, go ahead and write it down because you're creating another review sheet. And this is very similar to what you're going to see on your test tomorrow. Very, very similar. Someone give me... Uh, Okay, hold on. Let's start here. How many pairs of congruent angles do I have to have? Two. two. Because if I have two, that means I have three. If both of them have a hundred and both of them have a 50, then the third one has to be in a 30, right? Okay, so if two pairs are the same, the third pair is automatically the same. Okay, so can I prove that two pairs are equal? Yes. Zach, what's one of them? Okay, the 90 degree angles are um, shared in both. Okay, what's the second reason? Isaiah? Sign the two right angles on the left and right. Yeah, isn't that the one that Zach just said or no? Oh, you said 98. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yes, so the answer is yes because 98 degrees is shared. That's all you have to write. I know what you mean by that. The 98 degree angle is shared and the 90 degree um, angle pair in both all right, is proof, okay? So similar triangles must have at least two angles <coughs> that are the same. Okay, how are we doing? Okay, moving on to number, I guess we could just ignore the numbering at this point. We're past, we've done more than seven problems. Okay. All right, so are these two triangles similar, yes or no? You cannot just say yes or no, okay? You, you've got to have more than that. So that means you have to solve for one of the unknown angles. It doesn't matter which one. And again, you're looking for two, two of the angles to be congruent. Well, you know you have one, okay, the hundreds. But because 30 doesn't match with 32, well... Is, is this one 30? Well, you have to solve for it. Or is this one 32? Well, you have to solve for it to know, okay? Because the second one isn't, isn't showing all the way. I know it doesn't match with this one, duh. 32 is not equal to 30. But if this one is 32, then they could still be similar. Miles, you okay? All right. Well, what is X? What is X equal to? 50. Well, last time I checked, 50 is not equal to 32 either, so my answer is no. You see how we did that? Okay, there's not a whole lot of work you need to show, okay? But I need to see proof that you solved for one of the unknown angle measures. All right. Um, we're through about half of your test. Okay. You have two problems that look like this. Basically, he, and here's how it's worded. I just, I didn't write all the words out. 
A polygon has five sides. The interior angle measures are 96, 102, 88, 76, and x. Find the value of x and show your work. What do I mean by that? It starts with an E equation. Do I mind if you go ahead and add them together? Absolutely not. You, you can go ahead and just add them together, but I need to see an equation. All right, so go ahead and do that. All right, what do you get when you add them all together? The ones you know. 362. Okay, <laughs> 362 plus X equals, all right, so here's going to be the kicker, guys, for these problems on your test tomorrow. You've got to be able to find the sum. Okay, well, what's the sum of a five-sided? 540. What's going to happen if I tell you a seven-sided polygon, but you don't remember what the sum is? You do the equation. You do the formula. Because to find, if you don't know the sum, you won't get these problems right. And the sum will change depending on how many sides there are. Subtract 362 from both sides, and x equals 178. Okay? What's that? Okay. All right. So two problems like that. Okay. Um, now let's do, okay. You have two problems like this. Okay. This is, this is similar to that chemical spill problem that we were setting up a proportion. Um, okay. But I think you're going to like how this is set up a little bit better. Okay. And I took this straight from the test bank for your curriculum. I liked how it was written, and I think it's going to be easier. The shadow, the shadow is basically what forms a triangle, so that's kind of the tie-in to our lesson. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure. Okay. All right, guys. A statue. I didn't mean to write meters. I'm in the right feet. A statue is six feet tall and cast a three and a half foot shadow. A nearby building ca cast a ten and a half foot shadow. How tall is the building? You need to set up a proportion. And remember, guys, there's not just one correct way to set up a proportion. Go ahead and do this. This is two problems on your test tomorrow. Here's my advice to you. Take the first, take the statue. Six feet tall, three and a half foot shadow. Put it into a ratio. Six over three and a half. You could say three and a half over six if you wanted to, okay? As long as the other side matches up. So, height of the building, shadow, I'm sorry, statue. Height of the statue over shadow. Height over shadow. So, guess what it's going to be on the other side? Height over shadow. All right, you see how we matched it up? Height over shadow, and it's the same scenario on each problem, and, and it's the height over shadow type thing on your test as well, so I'm really giving you a really strong lead on your test questions tomorrow. You just have to be able to set up your proportion, and now you will use cross products to solve. So cross products, three and a half, H equals 63. Did y'all get that? Yes. Divide both sides by three and a half. And what'd you get? 18. <laughs> so it's not a very tall building. Maybe like a shed or something. Okay. All right. Now, um, guys, that's that's most, uh, most everything. Um, we've got a review section tomorrow. And this stuff's going to look awful familiar to you. Real familiar to you. But it's a bit of a throwback. I gotta start getting you ready for our end of course exam because believe it or not, it's it's coming. Okay, so we're just gonna bring in some of these. There are only two points a piece, okay, on your test tomorrow. So they're not very many points. You have opportunity for two bonus questions. So it basically if if you make mistakes in the review section, there's quite a bit um, of opportunity to make up those points. But we shouldn't, okay? All we have to do is simplify the expression here. Anybody see anything? Yes, it's... Anybody see anything? What? Anything that could maybe cancel out before I do any... The three sixes. Yeah. Wait, not the three sixes. Oh, oh, oh. Negative 6x and positive 6x. 
So now, what's 6 minus 10? Negative 4. All right, so there you go. There, there's one of your review questions, okay? Here's another review question. All right, I want to see who can solve this. So I'll give you a couple of hints um, in a minute, but my guess is, you know, some of you might be able to just figure it out. Is there anything that can be simplified inside the parentheses? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, 2 minus 4. Negative 2 minus 2x. And now I'm ready to, what's that? D -d -d distribute. Yes, 3 times. 2 is well, negative 6. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Were y'all on the right track on that? Okay, all right, I gotta get through the rest of it, guys. Number 12. What if I asked you to factor negative 7 out of negative 14x plus 49? Go ahead and factor it out. Okay. Factor it out. Okay, so I know I'm pulling negative 7 out of the parentheses. How can I figure out what's going to be left inside the parentheses? Divide. Divide the original number by the number you pulled out. What's negative 14 divided by negative 7? 2x. Positive 2x, not negative 2x, positive 2x. It's not negative. It's not negative. Hold on. i got to erase it. All right, positive 2x. And then what's 49 divided by negative 7? Negative 7. Okay. And is it true negative 7 times 2x is negative 14x? Yes. So you can, like, backtrack it like that, too, and make sure you got it right. So this is your final answer here. Okay, how are we doing? Good. All right. Um, whoops, hold on. Oh, goodness. What in the world is going on? Sorry. Okay, number 13. What is the distance between <coughs> these two numbers? Oh, Don't say it out loud yet. Oh. What's the distance between these two numbers? All right, calculators technically are allowed, but you don't need them. Um, the distance between these two numbers is what? 18. All right. Now, the technical formula or the process would be to take the second number and subtract the first number, which happens to be negative, which changes it to a positive, and it's 18. If you know that it's 18 and you can figure it out just kind of by mentally adding it, that would be fine as well. All right. Um... Next problem. Y'all want to take a sneak peek at your bonus? Yes. One of them. Yes. One of them. Solve the inequality and graph your solution. Solve the inequality and graph your solution. Hey, what do I do first? Wait, wait. What do I do first? Yep, add six. 4x is greater than 36. What do I do to both sides? X is greater than 9. What three numbers belong to my number line? 8, 9, and 10. 8, 9, 10. That was supposed to be a 10 there. Hold on. All right. Open dot or close? Open. Arrow going to the right. Okay. Um. Guys, we're pretty well prepared for our test tomorrow. I mean, we've covered virtually everything that's going to be on your test. I would strongly encourage you to go back and watch this YouTube video. It's 25 minutes long. Maybe just play it while, you know, just listen to it um, while you're doing your quiz corrections. Uh, you should be ready for your test tomorrow.